Good afternoon, I'm Vashon Brown with the Midday News. Special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can watch TVJ Live by downloading our OneSpot Media app in the Google Play Store or the App Store. That's the number one followed by the words Spot Media. Nomination Day activities are underway in three constituencies where by-elections are to be held on October 30. Nominations, which started at 10 o'clock, will end at 2 o'clock. The constituencies are St. Andrews Southern, St. Andrews Southwestern and St. Mary Southeastern. Director of Elections, Orit Fisher, who is monitoring activities in St. Mary Southeastern, says the day is progressing smoothly. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton is admitting that the ministry made an error in its approach to administering the HPV vaccine. The minister was speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica this morning, along with the presidents of the Medical and Pediatric Associations of Jamaica, who spoke about the importance of the vaccine. The details from TVJ's O'Shane Masters. The immunization program recently included the HPV vaccine for grade 7 students. However, some schools and parents are upset about the approach the health minister took in administering the vaccine. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says that Jamaicans agree with the vaccines, but how the communication was structured caused a problem. He added that some schools were aware and prepared while others were not. There was a program months before the first set of vaccines were administered, which allowed for dialogue with the critical stakeholders, meaning the, through the Ministry of Education, the schools, the principals, the guidance counselors, the parents, the parents yeah. through parent teachers, a letter was sent. Um, uh, the PSOJ, a number of NGOs uh, leading up to the first administration, but there was no sort of major mass communication. Mm -hmm. President of the Medical and Pediatric Association of Jamaica, Dr. Clive Lai, says 75% of women that are sexually active are exposed to HPV, however 15% will show signs of infection. Mr. Lai said there is no treatment for the cancerous HPV virus. However, researchers and scientists have come up with a vaccine. He explains how the vaccine works. Some women believe that we are injecting the virus into them that can cause problems. But the thing with this vaccine that they use, they don't use a live virus. They don't use an attenuated or a weak virus. They don't use a dead virus. They actually take the DNA out of the virus and use the shell which is called viral-like particles. And this fools the body that the virus is there. So your system, you start, your immune system produces antibodies to fight the, back, the virus. And that builds you up so that if you should get the real thing, then your immune system is strong enough to defeat it. What? The vaccine is 98 to 100 percent effective for up to 89 years and reduce the risk of the cervical cancer by 70 to 75 percent. President of the Pediatric Association of Jamaica, Dr. Abigail Harrison, said it is recommended for individuals to get the vaccine between the ages of 9 to 13. What we also recognize, which is one of the big reasons why most countries do it at this age for their young girls, is that this is when the body, the body's immune system, has the best response to the vaccine. And so it's the ideal time to give it. Mm -hmm. So we may not catch everybody who, you know, has never had sex, but our primary goal is to make sure that we have it as effectively as we can. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. And back to nomination day activities now for a moment. As we reported earlier on, nomination day activities are taking place in three constituencies. Now, one of the constituencies, Southeast St. Mary. We join our reporter Herman Green with the latest on the nomination of candidates Dr. Norman Dunn and Dr. Shane Alexis. Herman? Herman? What's the latest on nomination day activities in Southeast St. Mary? Well, when we came down here about 10 o'clock, it has been a pure jubilation from both sides of the political divide. Well, we actually drove behind a PMP motorcade coming into St. Mary, Southeast St. Mary. And since we've hit the ground here in Anantra Bay, it has just been jubilation from both sides. Uh, Dr. Norman Dunn for the JLP, he was supposed to be nominated at 10 o'clock. However, he was finally nominated sometime later, about 
that's when he finally uh, appeared at the at the EOJ office for his nomination. We're not sure what was the delay, what caused the delay, but that's when he was nominated. And then the Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, he was here, and a number of other parties that were, were here to support him, just basically showing you how important this seat is for the JLP and also for the PNP, because they now are heading down to the nomination centre to be for their representative, Dr. Shane Alexis, to be nominated. The motorcade, again, we saw a number of PMP stalwarts. We saw uh, Dr. or rather Damon Crawford, we saw him. We saw a number of uh, Dr. Morris Guy, a number of party stalwarts heading into another bay for, to support their candidate, Dr. Shane Alexis. As far as our uh, party supporters are concerned, we haven't heard of any incidents, any clashes of any sort. As a matter of fact, we've seen vehicles with, both, with, part, with supporters from both parties, both representatives, in the one vehicle, waving their flags and jubilating. So... Basically, it's a part to be moved down here. Uh, the, it's a bit behind schedule in terms of the nomination, but things have been going smoothly in terms of influence, in terms of anything that would have caused uh, to mar the, the, the day. Nothing of that sort has happened. Things have been going smoothly. So we are basically now moving with the PMP down to the nomination centre again to get uh, to see Dr. No, Dr. Shane Alexis be nominated. All right, thank you so much. That was our reporter, Herman Green, giving us the latest on Southeast St. Mary. Now, as we reported that there are by-elections taking place, well, there are nomination day activities for three by-elections taking place in St. Andrews Southern, St. Andrews Southwestern, as well as St. Mary Southeastern. And we will continue to provide you with updates on nomination day activities. We go now to Another story, the Jamaica urban transit company JUTC has launched an investigation into the cause of the recent spate of attacks on its buses. As we hear in this report, the state-run bus company says it has already been making progress in its probe. Incidents. JUTC Managing Director Paul Abrams revealed that the company has made headway in finding out the cause of attacks against its buses. We are very close to resolving the matter um, because we have some intelligence that's telling us exactly where it's coming from now. But I wouldn't want to say any more on that right now. In an effort to identify the vandals, the state-run bus company has joined forces with Crime Stop. The company is also struggling to keep up with mounting costs of repairing its vandalized buses. We're actually running out of windshields and side glasses right now, so we have to place another order to Europe, which is a tremendous strain on, on the finances of the JUTC and the loss of revenue we experience on the bus being done. Within the last four years, there have been 237 cases of stone attacks against the buses. Several of the attacks took place in Greater Portmore, the Mandela Highway, and Angels in St. Catherine, as well as Bull Bay and Stony Hill in St. Andrew. The most recent attack left two passengers injured. A JUTC bus was stoned along Washington Boulevard in St. Andrew on Thursday night. Fragments from shattered glass went into the passengers' eyes. So far, there have been more than 60 attacks on JUTC buses this year. Co-chairman of the Economic Program Oversight Committee, EPOC, Keith Duncan, says Jamaica does not need to worry about the United Kingdom leaving the European Union. Mr. Duncan, who was speaking at the Manchester Chamber of Commerce recently, said the UK would rekindle their relationship with the Commonwealth. He adds that there are great opportunities and Jamaica and the UK will remain partners. And to make this pledge that the UK will remain open, we will rekindle our relationship with the Commonwealth that's why we're hosting the summit in April. And you have nothing to fear as we leave the European Union because at the absolute minimum, the advantages that you have now will continue, but we will want to be able to exploit the freedom to talk to you directly and improve our, our linkages and, and connections. Mr. Duncan adds that he will be meeting with business partners to look at some of the challenges and opportunities. As business people, when you interact with us, I think you do so with a head start. We have a lot to do and a lot to achieve. And I hope that uh, you will welcome me back again, as you have done today, to this wonderful place. And my promise is to return, but to, real, to see real progress in the thing that we've talked about. And of course, that's UK's High Commissioner to Jamaica. And he noted that the brand value of Jamaica is strong and we should further capitalize on it. Attribution 
is only you yourselves that look at all the, the other challenging issues because they're closer to you. But exploit what is good and deal with the things that are challenging. We will be your partners as you go forward. Senator Marco Golding says reducing acts of criminality within the St. Andrew Southern is high on his agenda. He was speaking to reporters this morning after his nomination at the St. Luke's Anglican Church. He also says he will be looking to bring investment into the area, which has not been receiving much attention. This, he says, will be through the development of houses and community-based tourism. Mr. Golding was officially nominated as the People's National Party's candidate for the St. Andrews Southern constituency. He was supported by PNP President Dr. Peter Phillips and outgoing Member of Parliament Dr. Omar Davies. The JLP's Dane Dennis is expected to be nominated around, well, around this time. And for an update, we now join our reporter, Kelisha Williams. Kelisha, what's happening? Kelisha? We're trying to get to our reporter, Kelisha Williams, who is in St. Andrews Southern. Kelisha, are you hearing me? All right, we'll return to Kelisha a little later on. Moving on now, two men are dead and two others injured after gunmen opened fire on a black Honda Stream motor car in Clarendon on Sunday. Reports indicate that the four men were at a function at the Three Sisters Sports Bar when the police went to advise them to close the bar. It was reported that they complied and the police left. The four victims then entered their vehicle when a white motor car drove up and opened fire on the motor vehicle, injuring the occupants. They were taken to the hospital where two of the men succumbed to their injuries while undergoing treatment. The other two have been admitted and are in stable condition. A suspected robber was fatally shot by the police along Marcus Garvey Drive in St. Andrew yesterday afternoon. Assistant Superintendent of Police Gordon Ellison, who was on the scene, reported that shortly after two, two armed men were in the process of robbing a woman near the Tinsett Pen. He said the police were alerted by a citizen, after which a police patrol unit from Hunts Bay came on the scene. and the police responded in kind. And upon re entering the area, they were fired upon by armed men. And then they responded in kind, as they are so trained to do. And it resulted in one man being shot and a firearm seized. And the man succumbed at the hospital about 2.15 p.m. The other man escaped, and up to news time, the dead man was still not identified. And we go back for a moment to nomination day activities in St. Andrews Southern. Our reporter, Kalisha Williams, is in the constituency. Kalisha? Thanks, Bashan. You're well alive. It's a process started a little earlier than expected. But Mr. Dennis accompanied. As you can hear the noise, the noise behind me has just um, been completed. Um, well, it seems as if it was just a first hit. There are a lot of so several um, supporters here. As you can see, by the term of today. But we're here and we're here to see. What are your expectations once the nomination has ended? You know, we're going to see from the campaign we let the forces know that JLP is here. And we have a strong team and we're going to be present. And we're going to All right? Thank you. All right, that was our reporter, Kelisha Williams. She is in the constituency of St. Angel Southern. It's one of the three constituencies where nomination day activities are taking place for the candidates that will uh, represent their respective parties in the upcoming by-election on October 30. We go now to sports. Dennis Chung, interim president of the Jamaica Cycling Federation, will continue in the position at least until a new date is set for the annual general meeting. This after Sunday's third attempt in three months at hosting the voting AGM at the Jamaica Olympic Association headquarters did not go ahead. Interim President Chung said only four members turned up for the meeting on Sunday afternoon and five members at the previous one. And as such, it had to be postponed while he remains uncertain as to what caused the low turnout. This is really an interim board. Yeah. This board was put... We didn't have enough people turning up. We had four persons turning up for the meeting today. Um, 
what do you think is the result of that? The second meeting and the numbers? I don't know because um, people said that they would have turned up um, up to this morning when I rode. There are some people who said they would have turned up for the meeting. Um, I don't know if it's the rain because you know when rain falls everything locked down in Jamaica, right? Um, so I don't know if that's it. Chung, who replaced Finikin in June, believes cycling remained viable and is pleased with improvements, but would not commit to seeking to run for long-term leadership of the Federation. I, I don't know. I mean, their nominations can be taken from the floor. No one has sent in anything. But, you know, I, I think people should, should um, make themselves available. And that's the Midday News. I'm Vashon Brown. Don't forget to join us at 7 for a primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon. <laughs>